Oof. Ooh, they are watching me. I just bought some fruit for my young brother. This fruit and a lot of it. And I guess I said something to the shopkeepers, these two uh, young, young women. I said, Karibu ghetto, which means like, welcome to my ghetto. And I guess the term means something else because they were like, eh? And I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was good though, I think. One thing you got to realize when coming here, or actually not when coming here, I'll tell you a story. So right now I'm out and about buying some things. Um, and I am inside of China Plaza right now, which is like a big, big technology place, I guess. Phones and camera equipment and stuff like that. And you kind of got to realize, you know, I think a lot of people... The point of this video is to... Ooh, no, I got to avoid that area. I remember last time I had trouble with somebody over there. Trying to overcharge me. Mm -mm -mm. Not really, though. But you got to realize like this. Let me walk down these stairs. People are going to do what people do. Ooh, these are wobbly. I just had a situation outside where I had... Um, I was gonna buy something, it was like a thousand shillings, which is 50 cents, and I only had 10,000. My body got that, leafy. Ah, yeah. And I only had 10,000, which is like five dollars. Uh, 10,000 shilling note. And so I look, I look at this guy, I say, How about it, mama? Nzima. <laughs> so I look at this guy and I'm thinking to myself What can I do because normally I like to give change like exact change, but I say to him basically I say I only have 10,000. Can you give me change? He says I'm not a conductor for like the bus and he said you have to give me exact change Which is not a very common thing people say here But I say that to say you are going to run into one or two rude people every so often that's not, you know, to say that going to Tanzania, you're going to only find rude people. So when people make videos about the culture being rude or something like that, it's, it's not necessarily true. Because you have to look at it like, there's millions of people here. There's millions of people everywhere. So some of them are bound to be rude. Overall, you're not going to run into that situation very often. If you run into it once, do not associate the entire culture with that one bad person. Because generalization is the problem we have and it's a, it's a form of judgment, so we can't do that. Another thing you gotta get used to. Ooh, Sue, let me, let me watch where I'm going. I'm sorry if the lighting's not so great, it's getting dark. But another thing you gotta get used to if you are here. Or no, 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 no. another thing we diaspora need to stop doing when we come here. And this is something I'm noticing, is that when, when I'm with Diaspora and maybe we go somewhere and we're at a market, and me, I know the prices for the most part, but I'm with a Diaspora, maybe they don't know the prices. And this has happened so many times. They may say something like, you know, when they see that the price they were paying was too much and they thought they were getting a discount, it's almost like an embarrassing thing, understandably so. But they may say something along the lines of, oh, it's okay, you know, it's okay if they charge. Whoa, hold on, why is the lighting so bad? They might say it's okay if they charge them more, they don't care, you know, they can afford it, whatever. 
but you know you hear and 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 this is just obvious they do care and the reason they care is because they're being overcharged they're being picked out and overcharged not so much because they're from the west or because they speak english but more so because they look like they can pay more you know that happens to tanzanians too and to say that you know the whole culture is bad because some people are opportunists is like saying the world is bad because the world is full of opportunists so i mean if you don't want to be overcharged when you come here do your research find somebody you trust find out the price for everything you want to buy before you buy it and then buy it and you won't have to you know cry or um, worry about the price and this way you'll have peace with your brothers and sisters But yeah, if you go and do your research on the prices, you will have peace with your brothers and sisters. And remember, you can always, 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 Abadi, Zifi, Aya. <laughs> Somebody gives me a strange look. I'm like, what's up? <laughs> but you can always, always, always. <laughs> you can always negotiate. Everything here, for the most part, is negotiable. So if you don't like the price, or you feel it's not fair, just negotiate. You know, do your research, know the price, and then negotiate. They're gonna look at you like, oh wait, no, they know. They might even smile and laugh with you and say, okay, you got me, that's not the price. And it happens a lot, even for Tanzanians. So don't feel hurt if you get overcharged. Just think these brothers and sisters are trying to make a living and they're finding opportunity where they can find it. If you look like you're an opportunity, guess what? You are, and you know, Essentially speaking, if you want to fit into the culture more, learn the culture, learn the price and learn the markets and then find out, you know, about negotiating because negotiating is a thing here. Whew, I'm walking, I'm carrying this bag, getting my, getting my exercise, getting my market in. Whew, another thing that just came to my mind. Now, I just went to search for a whiteboard so the boys at home, we can you, we can uh, do their homeschool a little easier. And I wasn't able to find it at the shop that looked like it would sell it. Now, this is not a bad thing. It's just a, how do you say? It's one of those things you just have to kind of go with. If you come to Tanzania, be prepared to search for what you're looking for unless you plan on going to only westernized markets. Then you'll find what you're looking for with great ease. If you want to find and have the real Tanzanian experience, the real African experience, there is nothing easy about being African. And you have to get out there and work. You have to get out there and search. You got to get to the streets, they say, get to stepping. And when you get to stepping, you know, really, really get out there. I hope I'm using that term correctly. But yeah, sometimes you got to go to these noisy, loud markets and appreciate the beauty of them because these are your brothers and sisters making a living, walking around. In fact, let me show you. So nice. What's not to love about that? If you can't handle it, it's not time for you to be here, I think. But only you can decide. At the end of the day, you're most likely an adult and you should decide for yourself. Okay guys, right back there, I just bought a shirt and a pair of pants and negotiated my way down. Quite a bit actually, probably more than half. And uh, I think today, because of my hat, I'm wearing a hat because I think um, I haven't tried anything new in regards to style in a while. Which, you know, means that I've become comfortable. And since I've become comfortable, it's time for me... Ooh, Bora Bora almost got us. It's time for me to move out of my comfort zone so that I can find a new one. And so I'm wearing a hat. Emmanuel! How are you? How are you? Nah, I'm good, man. Hey! Remember Emmanuel from uh, the video with my Congolese friend? He just came up behind me. I didn't see him. My day was good. How are you? I get real high, man. Hey, Nipeta! I'm still in my office. Ah, yes, man. I come, Nakuja! Siku, Singa, Siju. I don't have your phone number. You don't have? Yes. Man. You get from, um... Here, let me give you my number. Let me give you my number really quick. Because I thought he had it. He didn't. They're cheering about something. But yeah, we're just, I'm, I'm actually with Emmanuel. You don't see him because he's in front of me. We're walking to an ATM. 
and he has a shoe store so I'm gonna go check out his shoe store because I don't think I've ever went and he he gave me like two pairs of shoes for free. This is your shoe store. Yeah, he, he, he. Let's go get some money from the ATM. Okay, man. It's good. But yeah, we're, we're checking out some stuff. I am so happy. You guys don't even know. I am so happy. I forgot the point I was trying to make. I really did. But uh, yeah, I negotiated. Ah, I negotiated the price down. And then I came up with another point, I think. And that is that people are going to try. When you're speaking Swahili to people, People are going to try to speak English to you. It is not an insult like you don't know the language. It is just they love English. And because they love English, they want to speak it with you. And it's like a symbol of intelligence here. It shouldn't be, but it is. So we have to accept it for the time being until we can change it. So do not be offended if someone tries to speak English to you. Of course, it does depend on the person and the situation. But for the most part, it's not negative. So don't look at our brothers and sisters as a bad thing if they if if you feel insulted that they're speaking English to you. They want to be more like you, just like you want to be more like them. Hey, yeah. Missouri. Yeah, it's a Napenda. Yes. I am not but she got. She eh she she got. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna give him extra. Okay, so we bought the white shoes. He wanted twenty thousand for him, which is like ten dollars less than. Oh no, he wanted thirty thousand, which is like twelve dollars, a bit less than twelve dollars, or a bit over twelve dollars, I think. And that's not the price for these shoes. They were realistically worth like 15, maybe even 10,000. But because he's my friend and because he straight up told me his business is not doing so well. And you know what? I mean, I definitely understand what he means. He is a friend. I can give him a little extra. So I did. I gave him 30,000 and I'm happy. He says he's super happy. And later I can come and we can talk about how to make his business more successful. But that comes to the next point. Sometimes people here are not doing so well themselves and so they may charge you more that could be a reason someone's charging you more it might even be like you see somebody every day wow what is that that looks like a very good herb it looks like um or no it may be that you see somebody every day and buy something and then one day they may raise the price on you well in their mind or in their uh, life right now they may have some bills that suddenly came up. Hey, Asante, Asante. Yeah, I like this is my friend Rasta. Yeah, I'm from Tanzania. This is Rasta. I'm from Olo. I, I love that. you, Manija. Yeah, bless him. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know him, but he came up happy, so I'm not angry. I don't like the language, but at the end of the day, it's a culture thing. But uh, yeah, sometimes people, they're not doing so well themselves. And so they may have an attitude when selling you something, or they may have an attitude when when you don't want to pay the price that you know isn't right. So uh, it's about patience. They're still our brothers and sisters. We're still their brothers and sisters. If they've got to deal with our crazy selves, we got to deal with them when they act up. So uh, yeah, brotherhood, sisterhood, family, community. That's all it is. Actually, that just made me think of the another point. People here sometimes, oh, hold on, I'm walking past the bank. You can't film in front of banks, so let me switch my camera to the street. Okay, we're good. But people here will try to mimic the black Amer what they consider the black American culture, which is that, uh, well, I, I don't know, rap culture, hood culture, and they will say the most interesting things to try to make that seem like that's who they are. And it is something they see on TV a lot. 
is something they hear in music a lot, and it is something admirable for them. Right. I hope I said that right. It's something that a lot of people here strive to be, and I have to break down anytime I see it when I have the the opportunity to. You know, if it's a really, if it's somebody I know, I tell them, you know, that's not Black America. That's some, and that's not even the most positive part of our culture. And so you will have those people who swear by bloods or crips you will and you're gonna look at them and you might look at them like crazy but you may not know that well no obviously you know they're not really doing that stuff they just hear it in music and they copy it again we have to understand because uh <laughs> it can get frustrating sometimes you know hearing everybody calling each other what we were considered derogatory terms without knowing what it is i had a situation where a mama actually from my old neighborhood, when I first met her, she said, black American. So the first time I met her, you know, we were talking about culture and things like that. And the second time I met her, and keep in mind, she doesn't speak English. The second time I met her, uh, her two sons, maybe like eight and nine years old, she calls them, she says, your brother Mark is here, your brother Mark is here. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's great. And she said, in, in plain English, as best as she could, come here, my two niggas, essentially. And I said, hey? I said, why are you calling them that? And she said she thought it meant successful black American. I said, who told you that? She said, the music industry. So obviously there's a disconnect as to what is reality and what is what people, uh, and what people believe. And because of that, we have to be patient and teach each other because there's things about the Tanzanian culture we get wrong all the time. Again, it's about connecting. That looks like a very nice... Oh, that's a church. Never mind. thought that was a restaurant. Okay. Next point, as you guys saw. People here, and I think in many parts of Africa... Now, what is he doing? Oh, those are nice shoes. I might have to go pick them up. People here are very, very, very hard working. Some. Now, bear with me. I'm going to say something a little bit controversial. Some people are lazy. Now, this goes for black Americans, diaspora in general, and I guess, no, people in general. Some people are lazy. Some people are hard working. When people here are hard working, they are very hard working. When people here are lazy, they are very lazy. And this is something I've even spoken with government officials about. We will be sitting in their office having casual conversation as we do. And they'll say, you know, man, some people are lazy. Like, um, I, I, I remember I had a situation where I was uh, trying to hire people for the little factory we opened, the little business we have. And, you know, I had somebody, well, two people did this. You know, I said, hey, you can have this job. All you got to do is do this and this and this, fill out this paperwork. And, you know, because they said, oh, we're not doing, we're not doing anything. We don't do anything all day. We don't have anywhere to go. You know, we just stay at home. I said, okay, fill out this paperwork and we can get you something going on. Man, don't you know, they, or at least one of them, he took, what, like two weeks to do it. He didn't do it. He ended, I ended up having to come to him essentially and say, hey, this is not, you know, are you serious about this? And he was like, no, I, I, I need, I need, I want, but he didn't actually want, you know, and it was just like, what are you doing? Are you busy? You told me you weren't busy. And this is something you see sometimes. Again, you can see this anywhere. I'm not saying it's only Tanzania, obviously. But it is something that you might run into and you might look at it like, why is this person being lazy? I'm telling you, Tanzanians will tell you the same thing. If we're being honest with ourselves, we black Americans can be some lazy people too when we want to be. But some of us are hardworking and some of us are lazy. It's not to say the whole culture is lazy because it's definitely not. Habari dada! It's not to say the whole culture is lazy but some people are definitely a bit on the side of not so productive. So, uh, that's another point. A 
that is a homemade scoop. Head into a restaurant really quick. One second. How about you? Oh, I Be friendly, speak to people. And that leads me to the next point. Oh, it's empty, just the way I like it. If you are not in a good mood, if you are not feeling good, do not go outside of your hotel room or house or apartment. Don't go out. Because the way the culture works here, you got to be in a good mood to talk to people and you should be in a good mood before talking to people. That way you don't rub and create friction with your brothers and sisters all because of some stress that has nothing to do with them. So if you are not happy, don't go out that day. Solve whatever problem you need to solve and then go out for your brothers and sisters sake. Because again, we don't want tension, we don't want friction, and we want to cohere. We want our we want to get along. So I am at a uh, place. I don't normally eat at places like this, like what they would consider nice places. But today I am doing that because today I am in an extremely good mood. And yeah, that's it. You know, taking a day to just relax. And I'm doing that. You know, it's been a, it's been a while. It's been maybe a month or so since I took a day to relax. So... Uh, I'm happy and right now I am let me go get a waitress also another thing sometimes when you go to restaurants here even nice ones no well, medium nice ones there's nice nice like very westernized what we would call nice and then there's the less nice but still very nice cultural places <laughs> you gotta love it there we go <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you gotta go get the waitress or the waiter and sometimes you may have to wait 30, 40, 50 minutes for something that you feel should take 10 minutes. Patience is a virtue and patience is key here because with our brothers and sisters, they live a lifestyle of slow, slow, pole, pole, or no, slowly, pole, pole. And uh, I don't know, you gotta adapt. Because we're in the West, we feel everything has to be quick, everything has to go fast, everything has to come within a few minutes. And this is not the true way of thinking because it's stressful for those who have to do it and it's stressful for those who aren't having it done to them. So we have to kind of dial back on what we believe is correct and just because it's Western doesn't mean it's right. So if you come to Tanzania, when you come to Tanzania, do not expect quick anything. It can happen, but it really doesn't. And that's not to say it's wrong because it doesn't. And it's not to say it's right because it doesn't, but it's definitely different. And if you want to live a different lifestyle than where you came, accept it and embrace it and go with it. I just, <laughs> I just ordered something. I said, you have mango juice? Embe is mango. I said, you have? He says, no. I said, okay, can I have embe? I must be tired because I asked this man right after he said no. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, this restaurant has Netflix. It's called Al Kabir. I've been here like a few times, quite a few times. And again, I don't come here very often, but when I do choose to come somewhere, I choose this place because I live very far away from the city and this place is like in the middle. So it's not as far, but it's not too far. And if I'm already in the city and I want to go somewhere slightly nice, I go here. So uh, here's what I'm watching on TV. Culture. I like. Yeah. If you guys can't tell, I'm super, super happy. And I don't even know why. Nothing in particular happened today that would, you know, uh, no, this is life. Life is good. I'm happy. And I order from this menu. Normally I cook or I uh, um, have some food with the boys, but I left them a special treat, told them to be good, and said, I'm coming right back. And now it's nighttime, so we'll be, I'll be excited to see what they've done since I've been gone. Yeah. <laughs>